I mean, the most redeeming thing about Brett Michaels was the fact that kissing him bothered my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey Fisher is my guest today from season two of Rock of Love. We chat about being on one of the most ridiculous and original reality dating shows, making out with Brett Michaels, Twitch, LA Inc., and a bunch of other wild shit. Let's go, loser. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I know it was last minute. We have a mutual friend. Yes, Jessica. And, yeah, and I called her because my my wife was like, get Jessica Kinney on. I was like, I'm going to have Jessica Kinney on, but she has a, she just had a kid, and this is short notice. I was like, she's not, and I, but I was like, okay, I'll call her. And she was like, I got somebody for you. Yeah, so, and I like rolled out of bed for this. Yeah. At two. You've been up all night. <laughs> As, w- before we jump into what you were doing, all night, because oh, it's so devious. Uh, let's go back. You are from OG reality TV. Yeah. Like when, like, it was like Survivor, like, wasn't Survivor like one of the first? It was like Survivor. Real world, I think. Real world. Mm-hmm. Real world happened, and every network was like, we're going to do this. We got to make reality TV. And you were on Rock of Love season two. Yeah. Brett Michaels. The story of me getting on the show is hilarious. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's what I want to know because, so <laughs> season one happened and it's kind of funny. Like Brett Michaels is kind of brilliant. He's like, I'm going to do Rock of Love. I'm going to get girls to audition for my love and I'm going <laughs> to go an entire season and not pick a winner so I can do it all again another season. Right, he, I, I I think no Je- one Jessica like won that. the first one. Uh, there was a girl named Jessica who won the first one. Okay, so yeah, I mean he has to pick a winner, but then it didn't work out. Oh wow, I wonder if that was I planned. Know, I don't know, it just <laughs> didn't work. Okay, so did so you did you again. before you auditioned for season two? Did you watch season one? I think the whole I world did. watched that show. Okay, so here here here's the beginning of the story. Okay. So my husband who has passed away. I'm sorry. My husband and I watched season one okay. of Rock of Love religiously. Wow. He <laughs> he was only 20. I have to say he was only 23 when we got together. So he was very young. And how long were you married for? I was 28. We were together on and off for 15 years. And we were married for four months before he passed. Wow. So it was kind of a tragic story. That was 2018 that he passed away. Wow. But... um. But we used to watch Rock of Love season one, like, I mean, I, like it was a religion. Were you married then when you were watching? No. no. You no. were like we were, dating. We were, we were living together, off. but we were having a really tough time living together at the time. Here in LA? Yeah. I always say LA is the one. I'm from LA, and okay. so was he. So oh, okay. we were just home. Right. Okay. But, um, but, <laughs> but like, uh, we took a break shortly after season one had. Season one had uh, stopped. We took a break, <laughs> and he moved it. When, when I'm laughing because all I'm thinking is this poor guy. He's watch. He's watching this show with you. You guys go on a break, and then he gets a phone call, and he's like, I, "Just hey, just heads up. I'm gonna no, be uh, it, making no. out with Brad Michaels." No, no, it's, it's way better than that. <laughs> better than that. It's better Jesus. Than that. So he um uh he moved out and he moved in with his buddies and like uh one girl interesting and and they had uh we were technically broken up but okay. like we were one of those weird on and off couples yeah. and, like toxic for life. love yeah. yeah at the time he was 23 i was 28 i was like he oh st- yeah he i mean it stamina. was it was all about <laughs> i think back then it was all about who could hurt who the most ah uh, yeah you know what i'm talking about the beginning yeah. of that re- relationship is more like yeah. let's test these waters so he had a uh, he had messed around, I guess, mm. fooled around with a girl that he had lived with at the time. Okay. And I was like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what I'm going to do? Oh, shit. So this was a revenge? I, I kind of revenge went on our yeah. show. Wow. I was like, I'm going to go on our show. And, I, and, and oh, we weren't fuck. talking. So the funny thing about this story is that I didn't find out about his reaction to me being on rock of love right. until after he passed away. And I met one of his really good, uh, girlfriends at that time. Okay. Like they were really, they were like best friends at the time where we weren't talking. And she just tells you. And how she was like, Oh God, you, you should have seen. He like, 
had to watch it like a train wreck. But then he would be like, is she going to kiss him again? Like oh he was, God. and she's still there. Like he's, did, yeah, apparently he's like he's, rooting for you to go off every week. Yeah, He's and, like, please God, tell me she's not still on that show. So he's wow. like, I can't believe I have, I'm watching this. I have to watch this. And you were on the season with Daisy, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 You got, so you got to make out with Brett Michaels. I mean, I, I don't mean to like do. No, I don't mean to do that, but like, no, I, I did. I had to make out with Brett Michaels. How was that? It was like making out with a chick with was he a good really kisser? big lips and yeah. more makeup than you wear. I don't wear any makeup. Uh, oh, okay, more makeup I, than I, you wear. Than I yeah. wear. He wears a lot of makeup. He, he yeah, yeah. I mean, I could have taken a shovel. Wow. I think. Wow, it scraped it off. And then, like, I remember going well, up to him. Was he a good kisser? <laughs> Do you remember? I mean, I No, would... I don't remember. Wow. So I'm assuming now. Man, crushing people's dreams. Like, they're thinking 80s rocker, like, hair band. I never like... liked Brett Michaels. I liked uh, CeCe DeVille at the time in the okay. 80s when okay. he was remotely popular. Right. <laughs> So you were like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love to watch the show. I love yeah. I love season one. I'm just I'm not a huge Brett Michaels fan. But he's a cool guy, right? Like, is he genuine? No. no? God, man, just break, just breaking. No, he's not breaking hearts, crushing dreams. <laughs> Brett Michaels not cool. He's not a good kisser. Is there is there anything redeeming about Brett Michaels? I mean, the most redeeming thing about Brett Michaels was the fact that kissing him bothered my. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, revenge. <laughs> the best revenge it kiss was, ever. It was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> like you see this, oh, honey? God. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, just, that's going to look real great on your podcast. Well, that, that's all we need. That's it. Let's wrap it. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, the best thing about the show was the um, the girls. Yeah. Yeah. So did They're you, pretty cool. Some yeah. So this was... so. You know, Some like like now, like the the show I was on, they we put we get put in a hotel. We had that. Okay, we got sequestered. So you got sequestered, but we couldn't leave the room. Well, f- first first round, I couldn't leave the room either. Couldn't leave the room. Yeah, the first round of reality TV I did, they took our cell phone. They took our cell phone too. They took yep. everything. Yep. And you're sequestered. And the they, whole time we were there, we didn't have uh we didn't have a cell phone. Same. We didn't have a TV. We didn't have a clock. Wow, they we didn't took have the any clock clocks. out. Yeah, so we had no idea what time it was. Um, but then when you got taken to the house, mm-hmm. was it his house or was it a set house? It was a set house. Yeah. So you get taken to the house and then like you're presented with challenges, right? You guys did a lot of challenges. We did a lot of challenges. Ridiculous stuff. Like stuff wouldn't this stuff wouldn't air today. Yeah, I mean, I I I was um I did a, what do you call it when you, roller derby. I did roller derby. Oh my That's God. something, I, I was a national figure skater as a child. Really? Yeah. At what age? Uh, 12. And you did it nationally, it competed the, nationally. It was the ISIA, which is now ISI Nationals uh-huh, in figure skating. And were I'm you actually ranked? working right now on, on becoming a coach. Um, no way. For Just for adult beginners, yeah. It's something yeah. I'm, I'm interested in. Were you ranked as a First, kid? First, second, and third. First, in second, and third in national figure skating. Mm-hmm. Did you ever think you would like try for the Olympics? I had the opportunity to yeah. go forward at 13. They said um, you could either dedicate your life to – you you could go to the Olympics. You could dedicate your life to it or you could go have a social life. And I was like, oh, my God, are you are you kidding? I want my friends. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't ask a kid that. They're no. never going to be like, yeah, I want to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go to an ice rink. No one's ever going to say that. So There's some out there that do. There's yeah, I, do. I was definitely for sure not one of them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I told you I got out of bed at like 1.30 yeah. in the afternoon. I'm not. <laughs> How did you discover ice skating? Uh I went, I was seven years old and I went and I just. It was just like something to do. Yeah. I was just, well, I think I went with a summer camp or something. But living in, in here in LA, what, what rink did you go to? At the time, I'm so old. At the time there was a rink on Laurel Canyon at a mall and I went to no this mall rink. Way. Yeah. And I, and it's now like a nothing. Yeah. I think. The first time I went ice skating, I was living in Colorado and we would. I mean, there was designated, I mean, it's Colorado. There was designated hockey rinks. And like when there wasn't hockey practice, they would just have open skates. I've never skated on a lake in my life. 
it's so weird. I've been skating since I was seven years old, and I'm 46 now. Oh, and I, uh, yeah, no one should do that. That's crazy. I have never skated on a lake. I've always wanted to, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'd be so frightened. I'd be like this little bird walking, this little baby bird. I'm like, eh. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think you'd fall through. I think you'd be fine. But. I don't know. So you, yeah, so you're like, I could either go to the Olympics or. Or I could be on reality TV. I want to hang make, out with my friends and then eventually, Michaels. yeah, you took yeah. my joke. I, I uh. took it. <laughs> yeah, I just, sorry. I you, just, you beat me to it. You're quick. You're Brett, quick. Brett Michaels won. Yeah. I, you know, if I was that age, I would choose Brett Michaels too. I mean, you know. I think when I was that age, that would be the only time I would have chosen Brett Michaels. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's wild. So, okay. So you were on the season that Daisy was on. And mm -hmm. what was it about Daisy? Like, were you friends with her? Did you get along with her? No, not really. No. We got in a fight. You actually. did? Yeah, it wasn't a fist fight. We just, I just, I, I just thought she was so stupid. Yeah. I mean, I just was like, wow, I didn't know that humans could be that dumb. Fuck. That's how, that's how I felt yeah. at the time. And I was like, De La Hoya, are you joking? Why would you take Oscar De La Hoya's last name? I like, that thought that was weird. Wow, right. That's not her real last name. So I just was like. Well, is is she like obsessed with Oscar De La Hoya? Like I just right. didn't understand. Is like, her what first the... name Daisy, or is that made up too? I don't fucking know. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Her name is like Martha Plimpton. De La Hoya. I don't know. Martha okay. De La Hoya. <laughs> Mar Mar Martha De La Carlos. I have no idea. Wow. Like I don't know. No, I do know her last name. I forgot it though. And Did you get it's... along with anybody on your yeah. season, Jessica? By obviously. the way, I. By the way, I. I think that Daisy's really sweet. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to bad mouth Daisy. I actually really like Daisy. I just, well, you know, I mean, at the time, at, at the, the time, at the I time, thought she was just really stupid. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's it's hard. You, you you're very self conscious on these kind of shows because there's cameras everywhere. You're you're also you guys. I mean, you guys were. I don't think you have a clue. Of what people go through on, like went through on those kind of shows, no. because you are mic'd twenty four hours yeah. a day. And they were taking notes. You go and you go take a shit. Yep. And you better cover your mic because yeah. if you don't, it could end up somewhere. Go, yeah. You know, and you're like, oh god, that was my shit. No, we had it. You know, we got on. You'd be, you'd actually be surprised. We put we our microphones would go on about eight in the morning on Master Chef, and they would stay on us until we went home. Yeah. Like well, six. have you ever farted in your sleep and worried that it might show up on television? I'm not, I, you had to wear a mic when you were sleeping. <laughs> yes. Wow. One time I was sleeping. One time I was sleeping in the. <laughs> and the blanket they tape it to you the blanket was over my head okay and i was dreaming of aliens oh god <laughs> and i woke up and i was like you know i was like totally dreaming me. of extraterrestrials yeah. and i woke up and i went and there was a light in my face like oh, they, god. The they did it there. because they knew that i was you know <laughs> sleeping with the blanket over my head to try to preserve what i would look like anything left in the middle yeah. of the night i didn't oh, know what god. i looked like i was probably like you know, oh my drooling. goodness! I, it was awful. You had to sleep with microphones. On. Sleep. And, and how much alcohol did they pump? Like in I'd you? be like, "Hey, Christy Joe, you would Christy just, Joe, yeah." Hey. And they'd be like, "We can hear you." I was yeah. like, "You know, you're you're in a dark room with like you're in a dark dark room, what, and you're just and what reality." First time reality people don't know is that the, they hear the whisper just as good as your normal talking. Those oh, microphones yeah. are insane. I'm like, is my nose whistling when yeah, I breathe? Yeah, exactly. No, they hear it all. So you, you're friends with Jessica. Daisy's <laughs> sweet, but she's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she's sweet. She's really sweet. She's everything Brett Michaels wanted. She was everything he wanted. I don't know yeah. why. I think she won, actually. No, she... Well, Didn't I, she win that? Yeah. No, Amber won. No, Amber she won. She was the runner up. I think I think he made it I think it was a weird choice why he did that. Oh, Amber was like nothing. It on turned the show. out it was really it, weird. She was just so like a non-personality. It was very bizarre that she She won. just came she came off to him as real. Whether everyone else, but she was playing that genuine thing with him. He had but, a thing for Christy Joe. Well, like I'm, he like genuinely yeah. had a thing for Christy Joe. He was going to pick Daisy until he found out Daisy was still living with her ex-boyfriend, right? I don't I mean, I think he would have picked Christy Joe. <laughs> I'm honest. I swear to God out of all those girls, he had yeah. like this crush on crush, that crush. girl, like oh, like behind the scenes. Maybe they had, scenes, maybe, like they had real... some, maybe they had something in real life later. Uh so then Daisy I don't think so. Daisy gets her own show. 
Daisy got her own show. And I, I do adore her, by the way. I interviewed her. So you, I saw really that. Like so you ready for some crazy uh, degrees of separation between you and I that is actually wild? Uh, so I grew up in this little town called Fort Myers, Florida. And adjacent to Fort Myers is Cape Coral. We called Cape Coral Cape Coma because it was just a sleepy town and it's hard to get out of. And there's these four guys that had this band called Twisted Method. And Trip, Derek Trip. Wait, from Florida? Are you yeah. sure it wasn't called Twisted Meth? No, yeah, right. Twisted Method. You're close. Uh, and Derek Trip was the lead singer of this band. And I would go see this band, like, front row. I was in their music video. Like, I was a diehard fan. I was like, I want to be like this band. And then I almost, I was actually offered a, offered to be the drummer when the drummer quit okay. they offered me the spot and i turned it down because i was like no i'm loyal to my band but i became friends with them and i'm friends with derek trip to this day derek trip went on rock of uh, or daisy of love as dj sinister so he's now he's a good friend of mine now and he went and competed for daisy's love as a dj as dj sinister okay do you know dj sinister not at all yeah, so he competed for Daisy's Love, and I think he did pretty well. I mean, and he was your friend. Yeah, we're that close. Just two people, and Bre and making out with Brett Michaels. You know what? I think that the uh, I think that reality, the reality circuit. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of us know each other. It takes a special kind of person to decide to go and do this kind of thing, right? Whether it's cooking, or competing for love, or I love food. Do you? Do you cook? My brother is a chef. No way. Yeah, like, he, at a restaurant like, or private chef? Private chef. He actually he actually has uh, been a chef for Justin Timberlake. And, wow. And um, the weekend and stuff. And he uh -huh. he. What's um, his name? Chef uh, Chef Zach Minkoff. What's up, Chef Zach? Shout out, so, Chef Zach. Yeah, sh shout out to my brother. Um, That's he, awesome. And it's Z A C H, by the way. Mm. I have to, I have is he older or younger than you? Right now, yeah. he's 13 years younger than me. He just wow. had a baby. No shit. Yeah, you're an aunt. I am an auntie, but I'm an auntie to to like seven kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like a super related, aunt. like all related, or like, well, or like you're the you're the cool aunt. They're your friends. That's kids. a really long story, but three of them are three of them are from my three of them. These are just just seven 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 that I'm close to. Yeah, one of them is a friend's child. Mm -hmm. Another one is my best friend who passed away a year after my husband. Um, it's her her daughter is uh, the closest thing to me in the world, and and she's sort of like a a kid. I I look at her like a child, so yeah. she's sort of like a, a my child. Yeah. Plus my niece, yeah, you, you have know, and she's a being spiritual raised, connection. Yeah, she's being raised by my uh, or another really good friend of mine. Okay, so uh, I spend a lot of time with her and her two new brothers or her two brothers. Yeah, do you and have any so, kids? I do not, but she's the closest thing. I mean, yeah. I was there like when she was born, like in the hospital. So yeah. I'm I'm extraordinarily close to her, and and now I'm like I love that. You know, it, it's really important. I think that I think for people out there that are not parents that can be positive role models in kids' lives is just as important, if not more important, because there's, you know, there's times when you're a kid, you don't want to listen to your parents. You want to do everything the opposite of what your parents say. But if your aunt is cool with it or your mom's friend is giving you advice, you listen to it different, right? Totally. I have a shirt. It says punk, but it's like an acronym. There's, there's periods. And it's professional uncle, no kids. Oh, that's cute. I want, I want that, but aunt. Right. And you know what? The the children right now are not old enough to think I'm like. Right. They don't know. Super cool. But one one is one is nine, and she's like, she calls me awesome Auntie Aubrey. Oh, I love that. So I'm I'm really I mean I've got seven children like seven. Yeah. Seven kids around yeah. me, like whenever I want child energy, you know, yeah. I do like the little texts to the well, nine-year-old. I'm like, I love you so much. And that's the best part. We can go over to our friend's house that have kids. We can get our we can get our time with them. And then when, it, when we're like, we can check we're out. We're like, wow, you really need a bath. Hey, I got to go. Yeah, exactly. No, I, You know what? I, I actually help out with baths yeah. and stuff. But like, I do like that I could sleep in. Yeah, because exactly. Because I was her mother for a short time. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Kylie, I was her mom for a sh very short time, and it was 
pretty hard. It's hard. Like I didn't I didn't realize how hard being a parent was until like you're in it and I mean there's no checking out. Because yeah, there's no it's checking like, out. Wow. It was 24 hours a day every day. Yeah. And it was it was like you when you go from not being a parent to a parent it's just the transition is wild. Yeah. Especially if it's not like you 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 haven't had that child since birth. So it's like you're right. like all it's all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was crazy. Um so you were saying your pro- your brother is a, a private chef. Yeah, but he's you, an amazing chef. But you like to cook. Do you like I, to cook? I mean, yeah, I love to cook. Would I you? actually cooked a I cooked a Jewish dish the other day that um, I haven't had in years, but I cooked it because it's a slow cooked fourteen hour dish. Fourteen hours. What is it? It's delicious. It's called cholent. It is uh, beef and barley. And, oh, I love barley. Um, onions and carrots and paprika. What and, kind of beef is it like like a you know what? Just uh, stew like beef. Like a brisket? Just stew beef. Just it's stew like beef. chunks oh, of okay. stew beef. I don't know. I guess that's chuck. Yeah, yeah. And you just cook it slow. For 14 hours. In a crock pot or on In a, a crock pot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I like to cook a lot of things. I cook like, um, <sighs> I cook anything really. I mean, I make a ma- an amazing steak salad with slivered almonds and and mm. cran- dried cranberries. And Do you make the dressing from make scratch? Make my own dressing. What's your dressing? I mean, it's olive oil and vinegar and lemon juice and... A little bit of mustard. A little bit of mustard. Yep. Dijon. Yep. That's the emulsifier. Yeah. I make that. And then I, you know, just add I'll all my seasoning. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Solid. Okay. So if... Are you are you dating anybody right now? No. No? I'm totally single. Have So if you were... It's difficult. Yeah. Dating is... I can't imagine Crazy. right now. I can't imagine. I I met who is now my wife when I met her Tinder just came out. Tinder just happened and then a week into Tinder like I downloaded it. I had some matches apps like we didn't hover over our phones at that time like we do now. I had some matches. I went down to the beach. I met Kimberly. I deleted. Oh, on Tinder? No. I met her at the beach. Oh. And then I just deleted the app. Okay. And I have no idea what it's like out there right now. It's uh, it's like if you took Nightmare on Elm Street and then you put Ed Kemper in there with a little bit of, <laughs> with a little bit of, um, what's his name? Zac Efron played him. Ted Bundy. Oh, and then you, shit. And then you added a little bit of... Uh, the L.A. You, LA you a little Reaper. Dick in a Box oh, gosh. video with a little bit of... Um, this is a lot. Yeah, with a little bit of Sup Girl. And then... <sighs> and then... Uh, and then, you know... Brett Michaels is looking really good right now. And then, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you think about that one time where you kissed Brett Michaels and was like, why am I complaining? <sighs> yeah. You know? I had it really uh, good then. Yeah. Man, I can't imagine. It's I'm, really, it's really crazy. It's, really hard. it's like so, it, people can't spell anymore, and that's like a, I'm a grammar Nazi kind of. I, my, I'm Jewish, by the way. You can say it. Okay, I am. I am though, and it's and it's like I really, I really care about grammar, and like people just don't understand that the letter U is not the correct spelling for no. Y O U. You know, you know it's I a get, problem. It's funny. I get messages, you know, because, you know. You know, being on a reality TV show, you're in people's living room. They feel like they know you. Yes, they do. And they want to <laughs> they want to message you. Yes, they do. And they do. A lot and of they times, they, sometimes they call you, do. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Well, and, and for me, being on a cooking show, I kind of have to respond because that can be my business, right? I could be cooking for them, making money. And so I have a rule, and I'm with you with the grammar thing. If they message me and it's not a coherent sentence, I do not reply. I don't yeah. reply. If you're using the letter U for the word U, I do not reply. It's a good rule. I uh, I actually have my dating profile and I put in there, if you cannot, if you don't know that YA means you and not yes, then we have an issue. Yeah. YA means like, how you doing? Uh, I'm okay. huge on that. That's like such a pet peeve of mine. It's like, YA does not even in the urban dictionary YA it actually says not acceptable yeah. for for saying yes it's not yes yeah it's not but you know what i think it's going to change 
And I think Probably. I'm going to have to get down with it. There are some grammar things that have just become yeah, I'm, it's, it's a huge, acceptable. Yeah, I do like a lipness test. Like it's a huge deal for me. So what dating profiles are you on? And I really don't like hay. Yeah. Like I like hay. If about, I'm just like, talking hey, to you, it's what cool. About, what about hay with three Ys? I don't like that either. I don't like. I, I'm talking about a first impression, by the way. Not like. Yeah, but like. Not like friends. But like three three Ys is kind of like, I'm fun. It, to me, it's kind of like you're standing at a corner going, hey, you know? <laughs> <Okay. It's> like, <laughs> Guys, take note. You know? Guys, take note. Don't, that the three Ys is standing on a corner yelling out, hey. By the way, Got on it. Bumble, the girl has to go first. Yep. So she has Bumble's to, smart. She has to yeah. write first. So yeah. I, I always like say good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. Mm. That's the way I was raised. Smart. So if you come back at that with hey, hey. I'm like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I also don't like when people are like, I'm good. Are you doing well? Like I respond with, I'm well, how are you? Or I'm doing well. When people are like, oh, I'm good. I'm like, ah, you're not good. The point of you're this not, conversation yeah. is that dating is very hard for me. Yeah. Okay. So what app are you having the most success with? It switches. Do you hate that it's on apps? Do you? I fucking hate it. Right. I don't like COVID. And I've got Crohn's disease, so mm. and I'm on immunosuppressants, so I, I'm really kind of isolated. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like I don't like any of it. I want to go to I want to go out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Wanna I want to go, go to karaoke. Yeah, and I want to go meet someone at karaoke or right. do you know some sort of organic something? Because if I meet you organically and you say hey what hey what's going on, like I don't care because it's not me going to you and saying good afternoon and you coming back with hey. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a first impression. Your first impression, usually guys are like, yeah, hey. they're cute. You know, you, you get deflection and. Yeah. Inflection. And a, hey, what's go hey, what's going on is different than typing out hey. Right. I agree. Like, like hey I don't like it. Can't you just say hi? It's like yeah. less effort. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of, I feel like there is a lot of pressure on guys though. Like. You know what it is? It's not the guys. I know. I don't blame the guys at all. Okay. I think it's the women who accept it. Like the women are setting right. the bar. The guys are just going along with it. Fair. So, you yeah. know, I have friends that are like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, yeah. I don't want to like, I, I don't know what I can say here, but like, you they're, can like say whatever. they're like, yeah, we hooked up. I'm like, you mean you just met and he came over and you hooked up? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? Everything. Everything. And I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, fuck you. Because that could be a guy that I meet next week and he might want to come over and he's not going to get that. From you, right. From me. Right. You know, so standard. it's like a, it's, it's really a horrible process right now. And I believe yeah. that, and I'm sorry, I'm, I know the women that are probably listening or want to hear that it's like, hey, you're being mean to women. But it's true. I think we set the bar and I no, think that I think our bar is set like. <laughs> I think, I think any good, any good woman listening that has standard for herself would feel the same way. I think, I think it, it is a societal thing. It's same with dudes. Like when I see dudes that are so just like thirsty, I'm like, you're ruining it for all good guys. Right? Like, I, like my wife, never opens the car door like i still open the car door my husband like, opened the car door every time right like that's those are important values and i learned that from my grandmother but there's guys out there that will sit in the car and wait till she comes out side and gets in the car on her own and it's like yo dude that's not how it's supposed to be right so i i agree with you on that like there are guys that give good guys a bad name and there's a lot of them Okay, so let's circle back around to Brett Michaels and why I don't like him. Okay, let's so do it. I couldn't, I can't have dairy, which you, you, you'd understand. I mean, yep. I'm lactose intolerant bad. My okay. wife's mom had Crohn's. Okay, so not all people with Crohn's are lactose intolerant. I happen to be extremely lactose intolerant, like to the point of like the worst that the doctors have ever seen. Wow. Very. I can't wow. even have like a teaspoonful of milk will set you off for like, a uh, good 72 hours. Like wow. it's pretty bad. Wow. And possible hospitalization. It's, it's pretty bad. It's not anaphylactic, but it's, it's, it's when did you learn stomach, that? At what age bad. did you learn that? What? I was 17. Yeah. When I was diagnosed. Now I, I write a blog. You were in high school going through this. I was, no, I had just graduated. Graduate. Okay. And I had moved out. Like I moved out at 17. I've, I've, I've been on yeah. my own for quite a, quite a minute. Right. But, but, 
get back to Brett Michaels yeah. on the show. They made everything with cheese or cream or milk. Every fucking thing. So you'd have chicken with cream sauce. You'd have salad with crumbled cheese. You'd have, I mean, it was, I couldn't eat anything except for Brett's food. So Brett was not on set very often. He was mm-hmm. only there when he needed to shoot and yeah. then he was off. He was yeah. doing whatever he does. And then you guys are doing challenges and shit. Yeah. yeah, we were doing all of our stuff. So in the refrigerator, there was pita bread and turkey. Okay. And all I had to eat was pita bread and turkey. And turkey. They're not, I think mayonnaise. And that was it. Yeah. So I lived on pita bread and turkey and it wasn't enough and i was i, I was down to about 103 pounds fuck well and also at that time and i like was people- shitting blood when i came off Ugh. and i told production i cannot have these things it took them sorry i know that that's no. really no this, we want to hear it i'm no. sorry i know it's really graphic but it's no. true it was i was sick and um the girl like Catherine, who was on my show was really concerned about me because i just was like i was there for i think eight eight days I think it was eight days and like to not eat for eight days pretty much was yeah. pretty gnarly. Yeah. And um plus are they giving you alcohol? This we time? also yeah, but I wasn't really drinking. Okay. I didn't really drink alcohol. I thought that that was like the stupidest thing to yeah. do when you're filming a twenty four hour a day being filmed yeah. on a reality show. You do not want to be drinking alcohol. But in those early days, that's what they did. They did. I know. So I was not I was not one of the people who drank. Okay. And so uh, I was not well on the show. And also, if we were in the limo, we couldn't go to the bathroom. People were having to be in. This is not a joke. People were having to be in the. This didn't happen to me because I was like popping emodiums like it was t- no tomorrow. I was just really scared of like having an issue. Mm-hmm. So I there, there was a girl who had to pee really bad. I don't even know if it was Daisy or who it was. I don't remember. Okay, But we were in the in in the driveway of our house and they wouldn't let us in yet because they were getting things ready inside and the girls had to pee right outside the limo on the driveway if they had to pee that bad. That happened. Wow. It was really, we were not treated well by 51 Minds. This was 51 Minds? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. And, and, uh, And no one wants to, no one will speak out about them, but like, I just don't care. Yeah. You know, and, uh, I, I always tell people when they ask how it was, it was good for the, um, you know, the girls. We we we. It, it, I mean, it was it was really like um, the girls got along pretty well and whatever, but the the production was not handled correctly. I think no. And so, did those production things create more of a bond between you girls? Well, just for to some of finish you? that, just to finish that story about the food. Yeah. What, the, the, my reason I don't like Brett Michaels, or one of the reasons, is because I finally, after eight days, I finally they brought me food that I could eat. Okay. So I go and I make macaroni and cheese with with uh, veggie slices. I think it was like you know non dairy cheese. And I go and I, I I go and I make it and and I'm in the kitchen and all of a sudden everyone just decides we're gonna be filming in the kitchen. Mm. Like everyone just like came into the kitchen while I'm just making my little tiny pot of something I could mm-hmm. finally fucking eat. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I want some. Of course. And I was like, Of course you do. I haven't eaten in so eight days. I haven't eaten eight days. Of course you want some of my fucking food. Okay. So I'm like, you know, okay, Brett, sure. And I go and I I, I give him a bowl. <sighs> And he says goodnight to everybody, and he makes sure to say goodnight to me last, no thank you. Um, and takes this bowl. Takes this bowl. Or no, I think he left it after he had like taken like four bites. Right. Four so now you have bites. to eat after him. So I'm just like, okay, that's great. And um, and he like hugged and kissed everyone goodnight. And with me, he's just like, all right, night. And I was wow. like, that was so fucking rude. Yeah. And it was the next day that I was like, I can't do this anymore. And that's when I did my whole exit scene of going like, you know, if you don't like, if, you, if you're not feeling it with me, you should just really let me go. Just, you know, just like the minute you're feeling it, you should just let me go. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're you just did. not in love with me, you know, I made it sound dramatic like they wanted, but right. all I was like was like, just get me the fuck out of here. Right. I just want to get out of here at that yeah. point. Yeah. Sorry, and I'm did like they? No, it's fine. And did it, and they let you go there? <laughs> yeah, he ended yeah. up letting me go the next day. I actually gave myself up for my friend, but what it really was was, get me out of here. Yeah, just get me out of here. 
Right. I cried. I did the whole dramatic thing. And I was crying because I was going to miss my friends on the show because yeah. you, I didn't know if I was ever going to see them again or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, back then you just, you now know. I know that everyone's like you all friendly con- with right. each other. But Well, and you can immediately connect now. You can jump on Instagram and connect. So back then that wasn't the way. No, we, no, we didn't have Instagram. No. But we didn't. also didn't know each other. We didn't have our phones. So right. I couldn't even like add anyone's phone number. Nope. Or their um, MySpace right. at the time, or their anything. So I just was like, "Hi guys." Yeah, it was very emotional. Bye. Right. You know, so I I was crying, but of course I made it look like I was crying because because of Brett and not, Brett, yeah, love you so much. But no, it was like, because Whoa. it was your trauma buddy. A lot of people don't understand that in reality TV, it it is a traumatic incident because you're under extreme stress. You're malnourished, or and I say mal- I was malnourished. You were you were severely I was very malnourished. malnourished. I was hospitalized when I got home. Right. These days we're not so malnourished, but we're getting a different diet than we're used to. Like when, like it, for us, it was like high sodium food, and like I don't, I'm a chef, I don't eat high sodium filled food every day, so I'm feeling bloated every fucking day, and I, like and. Yeah, so you're you're going through these these malnourished uh, days, lots of stress. You're competing for something, no matter what it is. You're like competing, so you're putting yourself in these situations that are not real, and then they're filming them like they are real. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand that, that that when you're doing that with other people, that they become your trauma buddy. They and do. and although I'm not friends with pretty much anyone on LA Inc. Well, and I was there for like a couple years. Right. So we're jumping ahead there. So you leave you leave uh Rock of Love. You're like, I'm out. You I still want to go back and say that I adore Daisy. Yeah. I do. Well, I mean she like, I don't she, want anyone to, to to feel like I have any kind of beef with Daisy or ever did. Um, she's, a, she's an adorable human being, honestly, and she's super driven and she, she's like a singer and she's, she's sure. really like, you know, she really, ah, she's, she really did her life and she was in my circle for a while. So. Yeah. Well, and she made a, she made a lot out of something and, and you know, she was it, very marketable. Yeah, for sure. So you leave rock of love mm-hmm. you, how long before, how long was the separation from rock of love to, uh, uh, Two two years, I think we started. No, two or three years. Well, what what was the show? Inc. L. A. Inc. L. A. Inc. Sorry, mm-hmm. I watched it a ton, but there's all those. There's L. A. Inc. Inc. There's, there's Best... New York Inc. Best in Inc. There's uh, lot, lots of Inc. Yeah. shows. Yeah, Inked. Inked. Yeah, no, it's L. A. Inc. L. A. Inc. With Kat Von D. The OG tattoo show too. You like you're just like in the OG circle. I am. Yeah. So how many how many years? How how long was it between? It was the two, two shows? 2008 was when uh, we did Rock of Love. Okay. And 2011, I think, uh, 2010 or 2011, we we filmed uh, LA Inc. And how did you get approached to be on that show? So I was interviewing okay. for realitywanted.com. And that's a website that that people go to when they want to get on real, reality shows. And I was oh, interviewing shit. people when they came off of reality shows. Interesting. Yeah. So what was your role on LA Inc? Uh, I was the shop manager. Yeah. Cause I you don't tattoo. I right? brought the, I brought the drama on. Actually, I heard you, um, talking. Okay. About, uh, having it, the private audition. Yeah. That happened to me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, so what happened? You were on this website, and someone calls you up. I'm or interviewing you people, and then okay. they approached me. And they're like, yeah. I had to have a website up there. I had to have like a profile up there because yeah. I was interviewing for the site. So yeah. you can't work for somebody without participating. Sure. So uh, they contacted me, and I was I was like, sure, yeah. Quote, I, I never watched the show, sure. so I just was like, yeah, for sure. What season did you start? You started season two of that season. I think it's. 3A and 3B or 2A and 2B? Okay. I think it's season three. Okay. 3A and 3B. And they're like, we want you to be the, we want you to be the, the shop no, manager. No, 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 not we want you to. We want you to audition. Uh, like, we want you to audition. We're looking for a new shop manager for a show, for a popular show, blah, blah, blah. You know, were they offering Cat pay? I had to like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're working on, on Rock of Love. We made $100 a day. Okay. 
which was nothing. Nothing. Yep. And I wouldn't have been able to afford it except for at the time I was a I was living on a trust fund. Yeah. So I was like a trust fund baby that funded me being on the show. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do it because it's so eight days. When I was the for first, me. when I was on MasterChef season six, uh, we started with fifty dollars a day. This is years later. This is 2015. Yeah. I'm getting fifty dollars a day. Wow. And then when it Coming cut up. when it when it cut down to like top twenty, it was a hundred dollars a day. Wow. And the only reason I survived is because I got the only reason I survived is because I got fired from a job and was able to collect unemployment. So I was getting unemployment and this hundred dollar a day stipend. And yeah, you you can't you can't be on these shows. Uh, I, I don't know about now. I don't know how people do it. I don't know about now, but you couldn't have been on those shows unless you were living with a family member. Yeah, <laughs> had had a had like you know we're on unemployment. It's absolutely or, the same. Now. We're jobless or yeah. had like a you know a trust fund like yeah. myself. Yeah. So this last um, this this new round of Master Chef uh, Master Chef back to win cost me $12,000 to be on it. What? Yeah, because I had to hire a chef to take my place so I didn't lose my job as a private chef. So I had to pay this private chef and he asked for a lot. He asked for more money than I make a day and he didn't want to sympathize. And so I was paying him more than did I was Did you take a loan out? How did that work? Or did you no, I had it. it. You had it? <laughs> but I still paid it. Twelve thousand dollars is twelve thousand dollars. That's real. You you can't. I I don't, I don't think people really understand. You can't. You literally cannot just up and go on these shows without losing something. Yeah. So it takes something. unless you're like living in your parents' basement. Which... Still take something. It'll take a piece of your soul then. <laughs> that it does. Right? I mean, I mean, forever. I made out with Brad Michaels. And forever. I can't take that away. <laughs> I'd put that on my resume. I mean, I tried when I went to go get a job after that. I was like. <laughs> You know, so it's hard. No, I'm serious. I'm actually not joking. They want, uh, so I'm trying to do this coaching for, you know, coaching for um, ice figure skating. And I'm like, what kind of resume would you like from me? Yeah. You're like, I've done it. I mean, like, I've got my inner, I mean, I'm a DJ also. So it's like, okay. So like, I'd be a really good teacher for you for ice skating. Cause like I could spin I, some tunes. I got the music you know? for like, you. I know what you need to skate to. Like I got, I yeah. got, I got the tunes. Yeah. <laughs> I could make up a really good routine. Just put on it's some Dave funny. Matthews and skate. Yeah. Like one time I made out with Brett Michaels. Check. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you put on your resume for yeah. to be a figure skating coach? I was like, how about if I just talk about my figure skating career back in 1987? I think that'd be better. Yeah. I don't know what to put. It's hard. I, I'm, I'm literally struggling with this. And, and the woman that, that wants to hire me is like 12. I was like. <laughs> See, that? I can't even imagine. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting going from transitioning from entertainment into the workforce. I mean, I'm, I'm an assistant to a realtor. So I I work in real estate. Right. I mean, a lot of people don't get that like reality TV throws you into everyone's living room for weeks you become this celebrity but you're not like a box office celebrity we're not brad pitt we're not angelina jolie uh but then i always that's funny that you say that i always say i'm not angelina jolie okay yeah exactly but you give off vibes i give off the Ange vibes yeah oh wow thanks yeah but like i would go to the, the best compliment i think i've ever had in my life oh Thank you. I mean, you got the, you're rocking the Angelina Jolie leather pants. You got the loose curl. I, I could see you just like jumping in with Nicolas Cage and stealing I'm a ready to boost go. in a car. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I can't remember <laughs> a script to save my life, but I mean, I'm ready to try. <laughs> with a teleprompter, you don't know what I could do. Who knows? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I feel, I feel like you, you leave these you leave these shows and then you're out in the world and everyone is like, oh my God, you were on this show, but you didn't make any money from it. You know what? And I'm going to tell you. Okay. You have to try and live up this celebrity persona and you have zero dollars. So there is, there's, um, when I was a child and I'm talking like a six or seven year old, you know, they, everyone's like, when you grow up, what do you want to be? And I'm like, I want to be famous. And they said, do you want to be rich and famous? And I said, no, I just want to be famous. You fucking manifested that. And I fucking that. did it. Yeah. 
I was pretty fa- I mean, when LA Inc. was airing, yeah. I had both Rock of Love and LA Inc. and they weren't too far apart. So and could I could you had imagine like, if you had Instagram and Facebook then? I did. Well, I didn't have in- Instagram. I had uh, Instagram was starting when I was on LA Inc. Th- I was 2000? on I was on uh on Facebook for sure and MySpace. Mm, you were I had on MySpace. 75,000 friends on MySpace. On MySpace. Yeah. I was a MySpace girl. Yeah. You know. Well, my so I so my band we did we were really good on MySpace. We actually we were an unsigned band. This MySpace would categorize signed and then and unsigned, independent. independent and then unsigned. And unsigned, we got top. We were getting a million plays. Next to us was Newfound Glory for Independent. And then next to them was uh, uh, like, it would be like My Chemical Romance. And then it'd be like Janet Jackson. And then like th- those bands would change. And we, we were flabbergasted that we were top unsigned band on MySpace getting a million plays. We were booking tours off MySpace. We were hitting up venues. And MySpace we, was great. MySpace was great. I missed MySpace. Tom, come back. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's up with Tom. Tom's on the dating app, by the way. Like, I've swiped, and I'm like, oh, Tom. You're... And he's still using that picture that he used back on MySpace. Well, I fucking would, too. It's the only one. Do it's you know the only he looks one. Like now? No. I mean, I don't either, but I'm afraid. Did, so you didn't swipe? You didn't swipe I right? I definitely did not. He sold like, MySpace for $500 million. Okay, maybe next time I'll go. Yeah. I was in LA recording my first album and the hotel we were in, they still gave out newspapers like complimentary. And I remember it hit the door and it was like MySpace sold for $500 million. And we were like, holy shit. We had no idea that that was like the end of MySpace and our tours were over. We were touring because of MySpace. We went out as in. So wait, what happened after MySpace? Was it done? Were you done? Well, we had a lot. There was some issues in the band. You were just like, I'm going to, I'm going to cook a meal. No, I'll, I'll get to it. (laughs) Kinda, because I would cook for the band. Um, but we we did a tour completely booked off of MySpace at 19 years old, made 80 grand in a summer. Wow. Four kids from Fort Myers, Florida, unsigned, using MySpace. We took that money, we came to LA, we recorded an album, and then we had issues in the band. And we kind of like broke up. I kept playing. I started playing drums for other acts. I became a hired gun. I was playing for different pop singers. I played for a, like a rapper. And then I was playing for this one band uh, called Sid Youth. And man, we were so fucking close. We were playing like the, we were playing like uh, Wango Tango and Jingle Are you Ball. Parlaying? What do you mean, parlay? You parlay. From, you know, chef to. To, oh, you know, I, I mean, like, I, I and, do and make a band, like, you know, and kind of like parlay it. Like. It it works and it doesn't. But mm. we were opening up for Fifth Harmony, Jason Derulo. Like, we were playing these big. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were playing big okay. shows. I've I played Staples Center for sixteen thousand people, and then it like I am seed for fifteen hundred people, and for Jeffrey Osborne, I like I like. Here I am from Rock of Love, and I yeah. get up there, and I, I just love music, you know. So I get up there, and I'm I'm like emceeing for Jeffrey Osborne, um, being the hype girl, which was pretty funny because of my look at the time. Yeah, <laughs> straight out from Rock of Love. But you know what I got tired it's of? It's crazy being up there in front of that many people. It's, great. it's a lot of people. It's such a rush. It's a rush. It's a high. That's why like a lot of musicians end up with drug issues. People don't understand it, and I I understand it. You are getting a high on a stage in front of thousands of people and then you get off and that rush, you can't recreate it and you're awake for days. I remember because we, we were fairly sober in our band. Like we didn't do a lot of partying. We definitely never did any hard drugs. We would drink maybe here and there, but we would play these big shows and then we'd walk off stage and I'd be awake for two days just on adrenaline, on adrenaline, like searching for that feeling. But what I got tired of is being a drummer supporting other acts. You is know, that what other, you're, you're a drummer? Yeah, I'm a drummer. And so it wasn't, it was never about me, which was fine, but I hated having to rely on the, the singer. singer. So, and so I, I was yeah. like, I'm going to go do something for me. And I auditioned for MasterChef. And then I approached then it like, it. yeah. And then I, I approached it like a musician, like a singer, like I'm the front man, but cooking. And that's how I well, parlayed it, it. Yeah, it's worked great. You know, I, uh, I'm friends with um, I'm friends with 
a lot of people that are in the music industry. Oh, I bet. And one of the people, I don't want to say his name just because we have a really close relationship. Sure. Is um, somebody in a very large band who tours. And he's always talking about how, like, um, the politics between the singer and, the you know, the other band members and then the manager and, like, the, like everyone's never getting along. No. You know, and he said it's just... You know, it's incredible as somebody who's not, an, especially an original band member, someone who's not an original band member right. that comes in. It's like you just have to, I mean, it's it's like a consistent, it's, yeah. it's not even art anymore at that no, point. It's no. like biting your lip. It's not art. Biting you, your tongue. You get to a point. Biting your tongue. There was a point where I was literally, it was just like, send me the track and I would just play along to it. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, I think that a lot of musicians feel that way that are, yeah. that are. Needing to make a living. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that part got hard. And with food, you know, I got to create. I was in charge. I was creating. I'm, I am. I'm creating everything every I day, mean, every just time. tell me when I'm coming over for dinner because right. well, it sounds I, lovely. And that's the cool thing about the art of food is that it is art. And the better your art is, the faster it gets destroyed. And the more money you make, the faster you spend it. Maybe. I do spend it pretty fast. You do. The more the more money you make, the yeah. more. I'm like, why that you is it spend. going out? Yeah, it uh, it's always like that. Like I used like oh, I used to live on yeah. this much, and now I live on and it's and it's still much. going and it goes and out. It's faster. the same way. Yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm not living any different. Like how's yeah. this happening? How's that happening? It's really weird. I do put some of it into stocks. Do you buy Do you buy any stocks? No, but I kind of I I kind of want to get a little bit into cryptocurrency. Yeah, everybody does. But um, you know, I I kind of stopped doing reality after my show because I was on a two year oh, I just didn't do it right. I just didn't do it right. I didn't have I didn't have representation at the time. That's the thing. Reality show doesn't tell you what to do. Yeah. They bring you in, they throw you through this gauntlet and then they spit you out the other side. It's true. And, and you're like on your own. Yeah. And um I could have toured the world DJing and I didn't. I've never been to Florida. It's actually, Florida, I talk shit about it, but to be honest with you, I've never been there. And well, you can, it's, you can it's still actually, talk shit about it. It's wild. It's actually one of my like destinations that I really want to go to. I've never seen warm, clear water in my life. What? And so, and my, I have an aunt that just moved to Florida, like on the Gulf, and I want to go visit so bad because Gulf's I've just, not so clear. It's kind of dirty. Go to go to South Beach. Gulf? Yeah, go to Gulf. Go to go to South Beach. Well, she's. And I'll tell you after, but she's in a really nice area and, um, the water's crystal clear where she's oh, okay, at. Okay. Okay. Is she close to Siesta Key? Maybe. Yeah. I'll tell you after. Okay. So there's not much on the Gulf that's really crystal clear. Um, I mean, I, it's, it's you not. Go to the it, Bahamas. Go to the Bahamas. Have you ever, you've never been to I've the Bahamas? I've never been. Wow. I've never been, but. But I, uh, just because I have Crohn's, I a little bit worry about the Bahamas. I understand. Yeah. You know, no, I understand. But, but I feel like I can share the water with, if I go to Florida, <laughs> you know what I mean? Got it. But Florida looks like it'd be so much fun. And a lot of people say, oh, you want to go to Miami because you're a DJ. And it's like, no, because, uh, I, I want to go for vacation. Yeah. But here's the thing that wh why they're saying Miami is because there's culture in Miami. The, a lot of Florida is. What a lot of people don't know, I mean, obviously there was Native Americans and then there's a gap and then there's like circus culture. A lot of circus. Are you joking? Or you no. mean like literal circus people? I traveled with a circus with my food truck with like fairs, state fairs. They bring in like. Shout out to Sammy. Love you. Okay. It's, Sorry. So Florida's wild like that. Quick shout out. So um, like Bradington. I love circus folks. Are you kidding me? They're so cool. So Florida has a crazy, like middle Florida has a crazy circus culture. And then it's, then it's also. Like literal circus, like mm -hmm. Barnum and Bailey kind of. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure so, like how down I am with the circus, but I really love, I, I love um, people who do 
Sideshows. Yeah. Love sideshow people. That's Love what them. the middle of Florida just feels like. It just feels like one a, big sideshow. But one big sideshow. So that's, that's why dope. people like go to Miami because Miami, you get art, you get culture, you get food, you get it's always warm. You get clear water, you got pools, you got bars, you got all different kinds of music. You got a very large gay community. You got like hip hop vibes. It's like there's a lot going on in Miami because the rest of the the rest of the state is like eating gator, drinking beer, and rooting for college football. Miami's it's like so it's, funny the impression that people from California that are from California have about Florida. About Florida. Because my husband never wanted to go with me. Yeah. No. And he was native here. Yeah. You know what's funny is the first time I moved out here. I moved, A lot of people say it's like the armpit of America. Florida? Yeah. Well like I thought Jersey was the armpit. That might be the, the other armpit. I thought it was like there's the, two. I thought it was like the dick and taint. It, <laughs> it, it could be I the taint. Say that. It's I my mean, state. but 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 as far as Florida, I thought it was the the armpit. But now now I now that I armpit. know from someone who was there that it was the taint. It's it's I, definitely I, the taint. I have a new I have a new view on it. You know. I but you know what I love Florida because the taint's a fun place. <laughs> <laughs> But so I, the first time I was in California, I went to a bar and my ID is a Florida ID and it says the Sunshine State. Okay. And the now bartender the laughed at me. State. It should. The bartender laughed at me. He's like, the Sunshine State. He's like, this is California. This is the Sunshine State. And I was like, okay. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. Uh, I was just told that the people are a little bit funky. They are. Because... Because Florida is the 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 natives are there's some kind of circus background or or drugs lots of drugs lots of drugs that's what I heard I heard there's a lot of drugs going flat on. flat states have a lot of drugs everybody said everything bad happens in Florida is that true well look there was a trend that I hit, mean you almost won I'm gonna tell you there was a trend that hit social media that you would type in. Florida man and your birthday and there would be a news story like you could do this right now Florida man and then you type in the date of your birthday and there's a news article that starts with Florida man does this and it's like Florida man dresses in a tutu and tries to chase an alligator and then gets eaten alive okay like stupid shit like that I mean why does that make me want to visit more because it's a circus. I kind of like a shit show. Yeah, it's a freak show down there. I'm d- I'm down. It's also God's waiting. I'm going to get waiting- my plane ticket tomorrow. It's also God's waiting room. Okay, I might stay here. <laughs> they call it God's waiting room because everyone goes there to retire. Which is kind of weird because I heard that the humidity will like kill you. Like why no, would you want to hu- be like... No, the humidity is good for old people's skin. Yeah, I know. But if you could breathe. Yeah, you can. I'm afraid. I don't know. I mean, oh, like you said, hit a wall of like humidity. Uh, I don't just, know. I don't know humidity. I've never been crazy. down there. Wow. I want to go to New Orleans too. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. And I want the food there. The food there is Ugh. amazing. Mm. Food there is amazing. I'm all about the Louisiana food. Make sure mm. you go with people because That's other food. I walked down Bourbon Street and I've never been offered cocaine so many times in my life. Really? You never went to Hollywood? No, like it made Hollywood look tame. So you've never really went to Hollywood? No, I have. Okay. I've played every club on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, okay. I don't know what your group was like, but... It doesn't matter. I played every club on the Sunset Strip. I hear you. I got offered more cocaine in New Orleans. Okay, we'll see. It's wild. We'll see. I'm going to call you on that. I'm going to be like, Derek? You don't... Look, you don't walk down Hollywood Boulevard and beads fly from the We may have had different friends. That's true. Just going to tell you that. That's true. So when you're on LA Inc., you're pretend running this shop. What are they paying you? I got paid six thousand an episode. Fuck yes, that's dope for that. Yeah, but it was a docudrama. That was not a competition show. It was that was not. not a reality show. It and was a docudrama. Not, that's not why you're here. I think that people. Uh, I think that people, like the general public, really has a huge misconception of what is reality and what is a docudrama. Yeah. The Kardashians they call it a reality show. That is called a docudrama. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Um, the Hills, docudrama. LA Inc., docudrama. Rock of Love, reality. Yeah. Your show, 
reality. reality. Right. And there is a hu- there's a huge difference. Yeah, the, the, the pay per episode. <laughs> yeah, it's not just the pay. I mean, it's a pay. There's no there's no elimination. There's right. no yeah, yeah. there's there's a yeah. cast that is not yeah. like coming and going. You know, right. it's not supposed to come and go. Right. Um, so it's different. when you did this, like, did were you getting? You were just told a time to show up at set, or did you just like? Yeah, every we had day, call times. We had, had a we had we had a, a call sheet. We had call times. I mean, it was a it's a show. How did the tattoos work? It like, was more like a, a improvisational show. Yeah, is how I would look at it. How many days a week were you guys filming? Five. Wow. How many days for an episode? Five. Yeah. So okay. So you're making six grand a week. That's good money. Yeah, but, you, but what I didn't know is you had to wear the same outfit every single day. Mm, that sucks. Yeah. We ha- we have to do that. Like the the first episode of MasterChef, when we're filming that, it's like that. It takes about five days because there's so many people that are auditioning. But you're a guy. We smell. We had to have our hair the same way. Yeah, no, we no. had to have our makeup the same way. We had to wear our clothes the same way. Yeah. Like it was really weird. That's the hard part though. Like that, you, you, at the end of five days, I don't care, guy or girl, you stink. Those clothes stink. People don't know that. I think that, well, we shot like, we kind of bounced around. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't super consistent. They just told me what I was wearing, what, what to wear that day. And then, and then, you know, if I had to bring back other clothes for outtakes, I mean, it was just, it was just sort of like a, you know, weird thing. I, I think that also people, people, uh, another misconception for like the world is our interviews. Yeah. You know, they think that like we were like interviewing that day. And a lot of times for, at least for Rock of Love, it was like we interviewed at the very end of, of filming period. Mm-hmm. So we like forgot what happened right. on they're Tuesday. They're sitting there with the clipboard like, and they're going on this yeah. day you did this. Do you remember yeah. when you talked yeah. to Derek about yeah. blah, blah, blah? How'd you feel about that? So yeah. you're you're giving your opinion like days later. Yeah, that, Whereas on, on LA Inc. it was after every scene almost. Um, right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean that's a I mean it's like that on MasterChef for the most part. If you were if you were a highlight in the episode, you immediately go into an interview room. And if you weren't and you needed to set up something, they would bring you in a couple of days later and be like, Hey, remember when this happened? And you're, and you're like, like, Yeah. Like, and you gotta talk about it in the present tense. Yeah, but what if you don't? <laughs> I had a couple of those. I was like, I did. <laughs> And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I felt like this about it. And I, yeah. I, I was like, I actually have no feelings about that. Yeah. But that's why you're good at what you do. Yeah. What I you- mean, it's improvisational acting. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't understand that. And I tell people, they, they're like, I'm sure. Th- and then they have it backwards. They're like, I bet on LA Inc. It was more like you were more real because maybe I was on there longer. You know, or people got to, it felt like they get to know me. Right. And I was like, no, Rock of Love is way more real. Wow. Because Rock, Rock of Love, there was no direction anywhere for me on my end. I think one time I had direction of yeah. to, to go talk to someone. The rest of the time was just, I mean, I remember filming Rock of Love thinking to myself, how the hell are they going to make this a show? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is fucking boring. Okay? Like, I'm fucking bored. Yeah. And if I'm bored, the world's going to be boring. Nope. And then season two ended up being... Huge. It, it ended up being the biggest season that Rock of Love had. Probably one of the biggest seasons of reality television, period. You think? Well, yeah. I mean, I wasn't. It was big. I was watching it, you know, like, I think I was watching it, you know, I'm like 23. I'm like, wow, you can go on a show and meet girls? You can go on a show and get girls to fight over you? I was like, well, Sign me up. Like, I think that's what I was thinking at the time. I was like, that was just, you know, 23 hormones in a band, very misogynistic, not understanding anything. I mean, but that's true. I mean, I, I think that your your train of thought is the way that America thinks. At that time, for sure. I mean, I period. I think, I think it's a lot different now. I want to be on the real world. That's all I wanted to do. I was like, oh, this is great. As a had- matter of fact, I remember being an actress as a child. Okay, so, okay, so uh, I come from a, a, inter- a child star. Yeah, well, no, no, no. I come from a I come from an entertainment family. Okay, and a lot of people don't know that either. And I made I made sure that that wasn't public back then because I didn't want people to think, oh, that's why that's she why got it. That's why you're there, right? Um, but I come from a, a a big entertainment family. Okay, so. So that being said, I was like, God, I just, you know, I had memory issues with scripts because I have like, 
I don't know, comprehension issues. Like it takes me a long time to get through a book and like I can't, I can never remember lyrics to a song, which is why I never became a singer. Okay. And, you know, I just, I have some memory stuff. I, I don't know if it has to do with Crohn's or not or what, but I just right, do. Good. And so I thought to myself, what could I do in entertainment? That like I didn't have to remember all this stuff, and then Just I was be like, "Hot on TV." And then I was like, "Oh shit, we are, there's real world. Yeah. I could be on this. I could yeah. do this." Yeah. You know, I'm like, "I," because improv was always my thing. And everyone, since I was like this big, real world was huge. Everyone, I had music on Real World. True story. Yeah. You know. Yeah, uh, we one of our first royalties was like was from getting music. On Real World, on the I'm Kardashian. friends with one of the OGs, yeah, like Ty- Cyrus. Cyrus. He was on Boston, and he's a really good friend of mine. I messaged, uh, I messaged him because he's friends with all my chef friends. I want to get him on. You got to hook us up. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. I'm sure he'll come. Tell him it's a good time over Cyrus here. Cyrus is a homie. Well, you got to get him in here. Okay. Um, I would love that. I I want to I want to move forward with this podcast, having you know the new people, but also respect to the OGs because like. Thanks. It's, I'm glad that like I'm like in that, you know, I'm in the OG a cool space. Thing. It's a cool thing. You, you know what's really weird? Put it is, in your Instagram handle, OG. You know what's really weird is when when you're gonna and you're gonna start having this too at some point, but it's like my my mom used to love you. She used to watch your show. <laughs> Yo, I had this immediately. You ready for this? You ready for this? Okay, people that watch MasterChef, they also go to the grocery store a lot. And I gotta go to the grocery store a lot because I gotta cook for people. And so I get noticed in the grocery store by these moms. And boy, did they forget boundaries real quick. I have been picked up in a Costco off my feet by a woman who shook me until my Costco card fell out of my wallet, out of my pocket. And I didn't know until I got to the register where I went to check out. And there's a lady in her 50s crying at the register, staring at me. These, I know these women. Yeah, I, I actually had um, two guys at the grocery store um, when I was in the height of LA Inc. Oh and uh, one of them was coming down an aisle this way and the other one was coming down an aisle this way. And I was in the middle and I was in a hoodie, like with my hood on. And they still I recognize was, you? Um, and, and he goes... You live around here, don't you? Oh, fuck. And I was like, oh, man. No. And then he was like, can I hug you? And it was like his his friends coming this way. And I was just like, I said yes, because I just didn't know what to do. Permission. I just wanted to. So he hugs me. And then I go into a different aisle. And then they both come and corner me again. Oh, God. And he goes, can I hug you again? Oh, my God. And I was like, I had to end up getting the manager and having to be walked out of there. Yeah. But it's I've different. had I've had a lot of things that are yeah, that, I mean, uh, p- p- people like crossing boundaries. Yeah. Again, they've called me on my phone. Guys are. I've creeps. had people run a, run running like at the park, like run across the lake, <laughs> like crazy stuff, like like corner me into a um in in, in like a an elevator, and I had one person. I had okay two crazy things. One time I was on a date with Steve O, a long time ago. And there was a woman who kept taking pictures of us on the date, but like her phone was right here. And I finally turned and I said, I'm on a fucking date. And she goes, you're a fucking bitch. And oh like she God. went, she tried to fight me oh my on God. my date with Steve. Oh and God. I was like, why isn't this happening to him? Right. He's so much more famous than me. Yeah. Why is this happening to me? Because you're the girl with Steve-O. Because, yeah. no, she was a super uh, fan of Rock Ah, uh, She was a Brett Michaels fan. Major. And then I had she one. She was mad you got to make out with him. <laughs> my other story, my other story was that I was at the Rainbow and you cannot be mm-hmm. on a rock show and go to the Rainbow on Sunset. You can't. You can't. Why? I Because you can't. You get mobbed? You it it's bad. Yeah. And this was like in 2009. So I mean, it was huge rock that, of love. And that's Someone also the last pushed time my friend. That was also the last time like Rainbow Room was cool. It's not cool anymore. She pushed my friend on the ground, and she came up to me and lifted me up, like what you're talking about, and started humping me at it's, the rainbow. It's fucking wild. These people think because we're in their living room week after week that they can just touch us and grab us and pick us up. I, why do they do that? I had a guy pin me up against a bathroom wall and said he was going to blow me better than any girl ever could. That's hot. 
<laughs> not for me in that moment. Not for me in that moment. Oh, sorry, but that's hot. You know, yeah, I'm sorry. It was a good line. I wasn't into it. I was like, nope, not trying to find that out. Okay. Yeah. Missed opportunity. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But girls don't know. Us guys on reality TV shows go through some shit too. I, no, I mean, not, I think that the guys probably are worse because. Okay, so the, the the person, the only guy thing that I have that was really bad was that time that time in the grocery store. But yeah. the, the the rest of them were girls. Wow. And the one that pushed my friend down, the one that was running across, right. you know, whatever. Fantasy thing. For they're them, all right? girls. So I think that girls um, tend to be a little bit more fantasy based, and mm-hmm. men tend to, to be a little a little bit just more, more down to reality. They're just more if, with men. It's more of like a hormone imbalance. <laughs> <laughs> was it a young guy? I, he was my age. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, he just. That's that's scary. That's I mean, honestly, that's, I mean, that's very thing, scary. I mean, I, there is there is something that there are some gay men that want to turn straight guys gay. Like it's a thing. Some there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. I didn't want to make it a blanket statement. I think that there's a lot because I think that I think that there. To be honest with you, I think that there's such a fine line in sexuality. Yeah. Um, that, you know what I mean? It's like, I think in a hundred, I think in a hundred years, it's just going to be a lot of pansexual, like just everyone's just going to go different ways. Yeah. I think that, I think that there's such a fine line that I don't think that, 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 that people are like, really like, oh, you're, you know, I I don't think that people expect anyone at this point, which is kind of cool, but they don't expect anyone to be just straight far or, this way yeah, or far yeah. that way. No, I mean, I, I definitely, I was talking to my wife about that the other day. Cause we, I mean, we don't have to deal with that anymore, but it's like, I couldn't imagine like going out to a bar now being a guy, like before I would even make a pass at a girl. Like now I would, I would question, wait, is she even into guys? Like that's the first thing that would come to my head now. And that's how different society is. A lot of the guys that I date, I'm not going to lie. They, they don't think that way. They are not fully straight. The oh, guys that I, right, the guys, the right. guys that I, I go yeah. out with, um, I would say nine times out of ten, they will just say that they're, you know, either bisexual or they're pansexual. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or they, a lot of the guys that I date for for whatever reason, um, which I don't think is neither here nor there, but they like women or they like transsexuals, mm. tra- trans, you know, transsexual yeah. women. Yeah, maybe who knows? There's something there. I mean, I, to be honest with but you, I've seen some transsexual women that are like unbelievable, unbelievably yeah. hot. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I have a cu- I have a couple friends. Uh, I was in a music video where this the girl that was the singer she was trying to really push the boundaries because this was like 2010, um, and all the girls that she had on set were trans women and gorgeous, right? Blew my mind. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Blew my mind. And I was like, I was just like, wow, this is cool. But I was cool. And and I'm still friends with them and on Instagram. And, you know, it's. I have to say, I get it. I do get it. I get it. I do get it. I it. I just do get it. And it's good that it's becoming more accepted. And I think, um. I think that because it's becoming more accepted, I think that that's why you're running into that. Yeah. Yeah, because you know I mean? there's it's also because, guys that are comfortable saying, yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more people are, are allowed to be themselves, whereas in the 90s and the 80s, that just wasn't right. that wasn't the case. Right. But we also have you to know? be aware that there are some men that are just objectifying those women that are really just into the physical of it and not the person. I think that that's the same way for men, though. And I think that that's why the boundaries get crossed a bit. Yeah. For people that were that have any any monicum of fame, yeah, you know what I mean. It's mm-hmm. it's when you become a public figure, I think that people really do feel at some level that they know you. Yeah, and I think that they feel. I had one person that took a picture of me in El Pollo Loco, <laughs> and and I was wearing sweats with no makeup because I don't wear makeup every day. Sure, and. L- literally, I said, you know, I, I really don't want to. And they said, it's kind of your job. Wow. Because, you, and it wasn't, are you going, would you mind taking a photo with me? No, so with you, me? Have to, you have it to was, do this. You're going to take a picture with me. Fuck. And I, I was thinking to myself, 
I remember back in the 80s when you could just like ask someone for their autograph. Yeah. You know, and people used to get so pissed. Well, the photo, like my the friends used to get so mad. Like, now. why do I have to? This, why do I have to sign my name? Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to sign an autograph right now. Go away. And I'm like, oh yeah, give yourself ten years, and everyone's gonna want a photo of you. Yeah, or they're not. <laughs> or they're really not. No one's gonna give a shit. Yeah, sign that autograph. It's in your best interest. But um, yeah, now the selfie is the autograph, right? Have you had? Have you experienced? I don't. I, I'm. No, I, go I ahead. Don't mean to be no, it's not rude. You, we, rude. I we just, just met today. Yeah, I literally no, don't good. know Ask if whatever. you're still on TV or if you Ask were whatever. on a long time ago. But have you experienced life after? Yeah. Yet? So, so here's the deal. I I was in a very successful unsigned band. Okay. We turned down a lot of record deals. Got you. We would sell out concerts all over the country. Got you. I have videos of me in a band being mobbed for autographs. Mobbed. Okay. Um, so going on TV, uh, and becoming this chef that was in everybody's living room as I was really ready. I was, I was already prepared for what would happen, Mm -hmm. you know, even, even the lady picking me up, like it was like, I get it. They're excited. I'm cool. She set me down. We laughed. It was all good. Um, but to a point where I was prepared in a way that like, I, I understood what would happen. Like, for instance, I was dating this girl one time when my band was like at its peak and it was like 930. I was like, let's, let's go to a movie. You know, this was, this was like pre, this is when like Netflix mailed you shit. I was like, let's go to a movie. And she's like, cool. And she gets up and she puts on a hoodie and sweatpants and I got dressed. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, why are you like, why are you dressed like that? I was like, because if, it sounded douchey. I was like, if I get recognized, I want to like, I want to look good in the photo. And she laughed in my face. She was like, you're not going to get recognized. But like, she didn't understand. Like. My aunt did that. And we, we got to the movie theater and we're walking in and this movie lets out while we're waiting for our theater to be clean. And we're standing there and these kids, these 14 year old boys come rushing out of this theater. And one of them recognized me. <gasps> That's D Rock from later days. And they all came running down and they wanted to take photos with me. And I took photos with them because I always do. I never turn it down. And I turned to her and I was like, see? I was like, But have you had that stop yet? Well, so pandemic it has because we're all wearing a mask. And so that's been nice. Um, but I love it. Don't get me wrong. Like I love it. But it's like being on a cooking show, a lot of people watch MasterChef and don't go follow you on Instagram. Like, I think the people... Oh, that, that happened to me, too, where, like, I had, like, a, I brought our ratings on LA Inc. from uh, 7.7, 7, which is 700,000 viewers worldwide, yeah. to 1.5 million. Right, However, and they don't follow you. none of them followed me on... Right. on I have on, the worst Instagram. Yeah, but that's, but that's okay, because, like, that's people that just... That, there's so many people out there that don't use social media like that. No, they, but, no, because all my other cast members had them. Yeah. But, like... Had all the followers, but yeah. for me, I can really bring ratings, but I did. They don't like for right. whatever reason translate into social media. So it happens a lot in the grocery store because I was on a cooking show. So the grocery store, it does happen a lot. Um, and then now, so when this airs, I'm back on TV, mm-hmm. another cooking show. Um, and I'm sure. How long ago was the last one? So uh, 2015. Okay. And I was runner up. So Instagram was just getting hot. So right now you're you're pretty chill until this airs. Yeah, yeah. Well, kinda. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, but like I came off that show, I was taking, you know, two years later I was taking meetings with MTV and pitching stuff. And mm-hmm. it's hard out there. You know, there's a million people that want a reality I show. To Discovery. Yeah. At one like point. Like you get it. Everyone's pitching something. And and it's cool. But now I'm prepared. You know, now I know it. Now I know what's going on. Now I, and I'm ready. I would too if I were to be on another show. Yeah. I would. I would definitely know my stuff now, and I wouldn't. You know. Right. So your your oh, life. Oh, what after. I want to tell you, I stopped afterwards because I was on a two hour or two hour two year um, contract. Yeah, ours and, was three. It sucked, and I couldn't do anything. Yep, same. I was really mad. Like nothing. Because I had a lot of really cool offers, and and they so told me I. they told me no. They told me no. Yep. They told me no. Same here. And I played by the books. I should, but. It's what happens. But so now you are, D, you said you were DJing? Yeah, I'm a DJ. 
I've been DJing for about 10 years now. And you do it on Twitch. Well, no, I mean, I also, I also open for DJ Cool Whip. I'm a, I'm a Hollywood, you know, Los Angeles DJ. Okay. And then, um, but how's Twitch involved? I don't know shit about Twitch. I'm gonna pull Gordon Ramsay right now and go, what is Twitch? Okay. Well, during the pan, during the pandemic, I obviously couldn't DJ, especially with my immune system. Like, I, I just couldn't. Yeah. And so a lot of people, a lot of DJs were DJing on Twitch. So I kind of just jumped on that and I started DJing on Twitch. Twitch is a gaming platform. That it's a social media platform, gaming platform. And are people live on there? Yeah. And so there's groups. There's like chat rooms where people are yeah, playing Yeah, people are games, chatting. They can subscribe to you. And you're spinning they can, music. Yeah, they can That's hear it. That you can talk. You can chill with them. That's yeah. dope. And I also game. So I'm a gamer and I'm, I'm a gamer and DJ. Do you make money in here? Uh, I mean, the other day I made $1,000. Doing what? Just chatting? So I'm just gaming. They like to watch me. It's they, they like people to watch like to game. watch you game, and I'm one of those people who is kind of uh, like a noob. Like I'm new okay. at a lot of these games, so like I sit there and I'm just trying to like figure it out. And right. the people people that that are really good at the game think it's hilarious, and they tip you. People will subscribe to you or tip you, or <laughs> and they can tip. They can just throw money at yeah, you. Yeah, they can. You wow. know, or sometimes they just come and hang out. I like all of them. Uh, they follow you. You know, and then when you go on, they come and you, they kind of get to know you. It's really, it's really a good platform for for um, entertainers, yeah. honestly. So, have you? And I'm going to say this, meaning you could approach this in any way, and it doesn't not overly it's okay sexual. Okay. Have you ever thought of doing anything with OnlyFans? I have had an OnlyFans account actually. Okay. I did not do anything nude. Right, because so, there's a lot of that. I know. So I, I had an OnlyFans account that had, um, you know, maybe sexy pictures that probably, honestly, could have been on Instagram. Yeah. But I didn't put them on Instagram. I put Instagram, them on OnlyFans just so that I could hopefully um, make some, you know, make, make some, some revenue. Money. But I didn't really push it well, or you know, I didn't know how I felt about it. Right. And I thought, God, if 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 this got out, people might at first. Okay. So I first heard about OnlyFans through Heather, Heather Chadwell. She was on season one of rock of love. Okay. Okay. And she's like, you should have this. You should have this. I mean, there are people are doing like cooking classes and this. And I'm like, what do you put on there? And she's like, Oh, I just put like sexy pictures up there. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I could just do it with sexy pictures. Yeah. So I, I mean, put, I, I started a Patreon to put recipes up because mm -hmm. everybody was like, I want the recipe to this. I want the recipe to that I make a Patreon. I'm like, here, you can go get recipes and just crickets. I'm like, Oh, you guys don't really want the recipes. Oh yeah. When, when I, when I was taking, when I was on OnlyFans, I had very few subscribers because I didn't, I wasn't promoting it, showing parts. Right. right. So um, even though they were sexy, I still didn't show the full right. parts. Right. And so people were really not that interested. And now I'm kind of happy about that. But um, I stopped doing OnlyFans because someone said, where are they now? And they used my name. And then they said, she's doing OnlyFans. Uh, and I was like, oh, shit. You know? And then all of a sudden I start saying, see all of Aubrey's OnlyFans for free. Fucking. So they just took my pictures and just started yeah, their own websites. Big piece. And then I, I, two things happened. Number one, I was really happy I didn't do nudes. Yep. Not that I would, but I was really happy that I didn't. Because you did it cross your mind? No. Oh, okay. Um, no. I, I, I like, I don't mind... Being my age and taking sexy pictures, I mean, that's nice, you know, but like, shh, yeah. uh, no, no. That's not your vibe. It's not my vibe, honestly. But now I feel like I'm connected to this because I had that. So now I feel like I'm connected to it. And now I think that everyone thinks that I have nudes on the internet and I don't. I have a bikini. I mean, yeah. but I have a bikini from like back in yeah. 2005. I mean, you were on Rock of Love. You yeah, were in a bikini. Doesn't matter. You were in a bikini. Um, I think it's funny because Kamala Harris goes on Twitter and she's like, two million women have left the job force. This is, this is a state of emergency. And then I Googled how many women joined OnlyFans in 2020 and it was 1.8 million. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like a, a, a lot of... A lot of women have OnlyFans. A lot of celebrities have OnlyFans. Yeah. And you know what, to be honest with you, the the world that we live in right now, in my opinion, is saturated with nudity and sexualism. And yeah. it's not 
I don't even know if that's a word. I just may yeah. have made it up. It's fine. You know, I, and, and, I, and I feel like that's not. You're more than that. That's not anything new. No, it's not. And you know what? The, the celebrities that are on there are so good for them. You yeah. know what I mean? And even if they are like totally, totally bare nude, it's but fine. But then that's it, right? Then that's like, then it's like, okay, you're on there. You're nude. You're out there. You're out there. Yeah. And I mean, at that point, live, you, you, you can't take it that. back. No, so you it's, can't. if you choose to do something like that, then yeah. it's going to follow you forever. And now it's funny to be asked about my OnlyFans account just because it's like I chose. I remember thinking to myself, like, right. where see, do you want to go with this? And I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, this is going to be forever. For, and forever, now we're here. Right. Well, and it's funny. Is so, I didn't know you did that. I just, when you were talking about okay. being a sexy gamer, I was like, oh, well, I'm sure there was guys that would pay for that. And this is, this is what my head was thinking. Oh, well, put it on OnlyFans. Get paid for it. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. But you're getting paid for it on Twitch. Yeah. I And I didn't really. I didn't really, I'm not making a ton on Twitch. I'm, I'm just kind of starting out. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, with OnlyFans, I just, I really didn't do that great with OnlyFans either because, again, there are a lot more, a lot bigger celebrities than I'm like a has been. There's like a lot of newer celebrities that are on there and, and also they're showing, showing a everything. lot more. Yeah. yeah. And they have to live with that. Yeah. And, and Twi- Twitch is really fun. I mean, I hope. You know, I would love to grow with Twitch. I love gaming. I'm a, I'm a big nerd. Yeah. So, um, do you remember when our our parents were like, "You're not, don't play those games. You're not gonna, you're, you can't make a living doing that." And there's people that make millions of dollars playing video games. Playing video games, yeah, millions of millions. dollars. And I love, I love gaming. I love being a nerd. That's why when people are like, when people are now are like, you're, you're not gonna make any money with that NFT. BS. It's like oh, I want to no. make NFTs. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm a little bit um old old to be doing this. I think, but well, I. I don't I think like there's it. an age. I mean, Mark Cuban is like has a full website dedicated to it. But like, I don't know who that is. He's the owner of the Mavericks. Mark Cuban. Uh, I'm not a big sports person. He's also like Shark Tank. Okay. You know Shark Tank, yeah. I know it. I just haven't. I haven't really watched it. Oh, Shark Tank! I'm a gamer. So, yeah, but Shark Tank's so inspiring. My People nose is like in in a computer. In games. in games, okay. Right now, I'm playing Sea of Thieves. Super fun. What was your video like when you were a kid? Did you video Super game? Mario? Super Mario. What that about, was my Ed Castlevania. What about Duck Hunt? Eh. Eh. To Duck Hunt. Eh. I don't. I didn't like Mario Kart either. Everyone's like, "How could you not like Mario Kart?" You like Super Mario. I like Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. One, two, and three. Loved being the princess. She could fly a little bit. Yeah. And um, and I liked Atari. So I like. And I liked. Atari. I also liked ColecoVision. I liked Pitfall. And um, I like Burger Time. You are a gamer. I really am. Yeah. But now, now with the computer, it's, I mean, the graphics are insane now. Insane. So insane. I'm playing Sea of Thieves right now. And it's just, I mean, it's like, it feels real. Unbelievable. I, and, and playing Minecraft and stuff. Oh my goodness. So how do you feel about metaverse? So I've, I've been playing second life for nine years and, um, metaverse is second life. Yeah. You're just, honestly, it. it's, I'm, I've been in it for nine years. It's, that's nothing. You're ready for it. You're just moving in. I just are you going to get land in the metaverse? Um, I don't know if they're doing it like Second Life. In Second Life, you own land and you own. I property think it's and happening. Stuff. Then I think yeah, it's happening. I mean, I think Snoop Dogg's like building his own thing, and you can he's selling NFTs in the metaverse. I don't know too much crypto. about. That's where it's going. I don't know too much about NFTs, but I will tell you that I feel so lost in having the opportunity to get Bitcoin. I remember when Bitcoin came out, I had an opportunity to get a lot of it and I didn't get any of it because I was like, I'm not spending my money on this fake money shit, you know? And now I'm like, wow. Wow. So I, I'm not really too familiar with Metaverse. Isn't that on Facebook? No. Fa- well, Facebook's like running sort it. Sort of. I don't even know how to get into it. Um, it's a lot. But I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if there's, I mean, if it's like Second Life, I'll just buy some land and then you just hold on to it. Well, I'll come cook dinner in... Your second life home. What? We'll hang out there. You can have the food's digital, not real. I want real food. food. What's that? That's my that's my NFT. It's digital. I want food. my money back. <laughs> Garson. No, you gotta come over and hang out. For uh, sure. My wife will open the wine. She loves doing that. We got great wine and I'll cook and come hang out. Sounds good to me. Set you up with one of my producer 
pr- producer friends. And I not, mean, as long not as, as it's not app. on the uh, app, not that'd on be an great. App. Exactly. <laughs> right. One of my one of my friends, not even just producer friend, just any friend. Just, Thank you. I'll, I'll hook you up with just, it the old fashioned way. Yeah, you know it's so funny. Everybody wants to hook me up with everybody. Oh well, then I don't want to hook you up with anybody. You can come over. <laughs> I solo. think I, I think that you you could just you know what you could do you could just have like a party or something or have like a barbecue or a get together and I'll just come over and then yeah. if it happens it happens. Exactly, I like. I that. much prefer that than the actual like setup thing. Exactly. I love this. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let's let's keep our friendship open. I want to hear about everything you're going you have going 100%. on. Hundred uh, percent. You got to introduce me to Twitch. I got to figure this out. Um, yeah, I can give you my Twitch handle. Yeah, what is it? It's uh, Twitch. It's www.twitch.com. Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. www.twitch.tv forward slash ladj girl. L A D J girl. That's my handle. L A D J girl. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, thank you for doing this. Thank you oh, for opening everyone's eyes to OG reality world. Like you paved the way for people like me. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to A Bunch of Losers with me, Derek Fox. Uh, please comment below. Uh, If you guys have questions for any of these guests, I'm sure they would love to answer, and I'll answer as well. So let me know below. Also, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, and then also make sure you're following us on Instagram, a bunch of losers with Derek Fox, so you get the update on the new episodes. We will be launching them weekly. All right. Thanks, losers. Action.